What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video, where we cover cool vanilla JS topics that will come in handy while building various web apps. And in today's video, I want to talk about a few cool features that are coming with ES 2022, basically the latest and greatest JavaScript version. And more specifically, I want to talk about app method and top level await. Now, before we begin, let me just say that there are more new features. And I only picked these two because I actually find myself using them, since most of the other features are related to classes. Now, what about at? Why it's so cool? Well, because it takes an integer and returns an item in that index. And we can nicely use that on strings or array. And what that means, my friends, is that we don't need to do this trickery anymore, where essentially, if I have scores array, and if I have some values here, so 99, 90, and then 100, if I want to pick the last one, what would be a normal approach? Well, we would go with old last, and then we would set up the scores, that's the array, then scores, and we're looking for the length, of course, but we need to remember that arrays are zero index based. So we go with length minus one, and then we should get the old value, correct? So we go here with old last, and voila, we have 100. Now with add, we simply can do it this way, where essentially I'm going to go with new last, and that is equal to scores, then add method, and then we pass in the integer. Now, if we want to look for the last item, we go with negative. So we go with minus one. And then if we want a first one, we go with zero because it still is zero in next base. So if I go here with new last, if I can log it, notice the result is still 100. Now we can also do that on a string. So let's say if I have const channel is equal to a coding addict, coding addict. And then if I want to get the first one, we go with console log, and then channel and add, and then we pass in a zero. So this is going to get me the letter C because that is at index zero. Again, very, very cool where we don't need to do these acrobatics anymore. Essentially, we can just get the last item, the first item, or whichever index you're looking for. Now, we also have top level await. But before we begin, let me just mention a few things. First, you'll only be able to run this if you set it up as module. And what that means is that you'll have to use one of the extensions that set it up as a server. So in my case, you're probably familiar that I'm using this one preview on a web server, but you can also use the live server and all that. So if you're one of the rebels, who's still using the file system to spin up your apps, for example, if you have a folder here, and then you just click on index HTML, this is not going to work. I'm telling you right away, you'll get back the error. So that's the first thing you need to do, you need to spin it up with some kind of server. And most likely, that's going to be some kind of extension. So that's number one, number two, you need to set it up as a module. And if you remember, in order to do that, we just need to look for the script. And here we set it up as type dot module. Now, finally, let's get to top level await. And that means that we don't have to anymore wrap some kind of code in a sync function in order to use await. So for example, if I have fetch data functionality, correct? So I'm going to go here with fetch, and then we need to pass in the URL. Now, in my case, I'm going to be biased. And I'm actually going to be looking for my course API site. Essentially, if you're not familiar, this is the server that I use for my courses, and I'm just going to go with tabs project. So you should get back some kind of data. So I'm going to get this URL, pass it in. And then at this point, we have two options, either we can start chaining dot dense. So that's going to look something like this, where we go with then and then we get back the response. Now I want to turn this into a JSON. So we go with response dot JSON, we invoke it, then dot and then let's finally get the data. So I'll say data 
is equal to a log and data. So that's one option. Or we can turn this into a function, correct? So I can say const fetch data, and that's going to be a sync, then we'll grab this whole thing. And then we'll just dissect it a little bit, where I'll take it out. And then I'll set it equal to const response is equal to await now. Correct. So we go here with await. So we can remove this one. And then we just want to go with const data is equal to response JSON. And now we can remove this one. But we do need to add here a weight, correct? So we go here with a weight, and then we log the data, and then we invoke fetch data. So previously, those were our two options. Essentially, either we use those dot dense, or if we want to use a weight, then we needed to create a function. And in most cases, it was something like a start function or init or something along those lines. Now it's really cool. We can actually remove all this stuff because now we have top level await. And what that means is that in the module, we can just directly use await. So let me remove here the curlies. I'll remove the fetch data. And what you'll notice that I still get back the same result. So even though there is no function that's wrapping this, I can still use it in my module. And I also want to showcase that same thing is going to work if I have another module. So in here, I created another module that just returns a promise. For example, that could be some kind of database connection, correct? So again, I set it up as a function, it returns a promise, I'm still querying the same URL and all that. Again, that is irrelevant. You need to understand that that's going to be some kind of function or method that returns a promise. And then I'm exporting this function, the fetch tabs, and back in the app JS, what I can do is I can import that particular module, and I can just await when the actually data comes back. How's that going to look like? Well, I can go with import. And since it is a default export, I can call it whatever I want. So in my case, I'm going to say fetch tabs, and that is equal to from, and we're looking for the fetch tabs just remember, we need to add the extension. And then let's set up the tabs, that is equal to await. Notice again, we don't need to wrap this in a function. And we just set it up as tabs, invoke it. And then if I log, I should have two arrays, one coming from my module, and then the second one, where we set it up in the bottom. And uh, lastly, let me just mention that as far as top level await, these are just basic examples, you can do more cool stuff. But for that, most likely, I'll create a separate video where we can take a look at more complicated examples. That should do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one.